Hello and welcome to this session in which we are going to discuss about the new features of Data Sage 11.5, 11.7, 11.3, or anything of worth of Data Sage 9.1. So I got a lot of requests to post this video wherein we are going to discuss the differences and the different versions of Data Sage. So stay tuned. So beginning with Data Sage 11.7. Now there are some interesting features in Data Sage 11.7. And I'm going to give a brief summary of those features. So the very first one is that the data stage flow designer. Now it's a thin client designer. So what that means is that it's a web-based user interface. So we do not necessarily need to download and install the client on our local desktop. So we can do it using the web-based interface that is provided. Another interesting feature in the data stage flow designer now is automatic metadata, metadata propagation. So what this means is if there is a change in metadata, for example, there is a change in data type of one of the columns and we need to change that data type. Now we go to one of the stages in our job and change that data type now, then we need to go to all the stages and make that change. So now we do not need to do that because that metadata change can automatically be propagated to the other stages in the job. So this is pretty interesting and helpful. The third feature is highlighting all compilation errors. So now uh, currently when we compile a data stage job, if there's any error, then it would give the compilation errors one by one. So we need to fix them one by one. So it would give the first error, it would fail on the compilation error, then we need to fix that error. And then again, we need to compile. Again, it would fail for some other, other compilation error, then we need to go and check that out and so on. So now it is going to list all the compilation errors all at once so we can fix them all together and then compile the job once we have finished uh, fixing all the errors. So again, this is also pretty useful. So these are some pretty useful features of data stage 11.7 as far as we develop developers are concerned for our day-to-day -day work. Now then there are other features which are a bit high level as well. Uh, so there are governance improvements which means auto discovery, classification, and quality management, which are basically concerned with Hadoop and data lake. So you can now, when you are uh, importing a data source, you can import the metadata as well. And then based on that metadata, you can do your data classification and data analysis and data profiling. Then there is an interesting feature of machine learning. Now this machine learning is basically, uh, uh, valid for the business classification of data. So what we can, what can be done now is that based on the data that is fed to the data stage engine or server, based on all that data and metadata, the server is, can now be made intelligent enough based on supervised learning where it, where it, it can uh, assign a business meaning to the physical assets uh, based on the data and the metadata information that it has got. So this is, more based on business classification of data. Now there are some connectivity improvements and new connectors. So there's a new connector for HBase. There's an enhanced big integrate. There's better support for ORC and parquet format. And then there is improved cloud connectivity, whether be private or public. So MQ, Siebel, Amazon, and so on. Then obviously uh, this is more relevant to data stage 11.5. There were various improvements for Hadoop and data lake. For example, now the engine could run on the Hadoop cluster and the metadata for the Hadoop files could be imported. There were also improvements in protecting the sensitive data in data stage manual job in terms of now there were opt-in data masking libraries that would do this. Now there were various applications which were included with data stage 11.5 in the data stage application itself. So Salesforce, Hyperion, Siebel, JD Edwards, PeopleSoft, Oracle applications, all those could now be directly used in the data stage engine. There are various updated DB stages. This is most 11.3 onward. So obviously if you're doing a data upgrade from let's say data stage 9.1 or two data stage 11 point something, then you would see that there's a connector migration tool that would basically migrate all those 
legacy database stages to the connector stages, which are the new stages. So that can be done automatically. So all those old stages, Teradata, API, DB2, UDB load, all these have been replaced now by the connector stages. Now data stage metadata, there are new requirements now with the data stage metadata. So uh, for the version 11.5, you need the DB2 Enterprise Server Edition 10.5. With the version 11.7, you need version 11.1 of the DB2 if you're using that as a data stage metadata database, or you can also define your own Oracle or SQL Server databases as the metadata databases. Then you have the balance optimizer. So with version 11.5, the balance optimizer was included as part of the data stage license itself. So earlier also it was available, but a separate license had to be taken. Now it's included as part of the data stage license. So these are some of the other advantages and uh, other improvements in data stage. And these have been directly taken from the IBM site. As you can see, these are for version 11.5 and the different rollups and patches that come after the version has been released. So you can see them in more details on this link itself. I'm just going to give a brief overview. So they have improved performance and scalability of the TCP port, which means better job startup times on busy system. The peak stage can now produce output in the hexadecimal format, so that is the need for your project. Then the APT string can, which was used for handling, which is an environment variable, which is used for handling the spaces and empty uh, values, can now work with the NLS settings as well. Then this is more like it also supports now the Microsoft Windows high contrast theme. So this is more on appearance and personalization. And again, the on connectivity, the DB2 dash DB can now be supported. MDM connector stage can perform a variety of functions on the MDM server. Then the Salesforce connector can do the bulk API. It can support the API version 39.0, Teradata 16.0 is supported, and the file connector supports Kerberos. So all these new applications can be supported. There's better Hive connector support. There is Kafka connector support. Now these are all related to big data. So you can read in more details what all can be done with these connector supports. So all these can be, so there's a lot of big data integration now possible with data stage. Then for Hadoop, again, big data, your cloud era version 5.8.0, Hortonworks, HTTP 2.5, all these can be supported. Other features are that multiple users can now run data stage jobs. So with different individual user IDs, they can run the same data stage job. Then the status of the Infosphere data stage job can now be viewed in the operation console as well. So this is also more related to Yarn client, so that is big data and so on. So these are some of the features which are advanced features in uh, data stage 11.xsx. So these are the features that you'll get. These are the differences that are there with relation to the lower versions of data state, basically 9.1. So 9.1 had a lot of improvements up, uh, on the lower versions and then 9.1. This is more, it doesn't affect us that much as developers, but these are the features that can be used. So as you can see, most of the features relate to big data. So if you're working on big data projects and there are a lot of in interesting features. And as we saw in 11.7, they are pretty useful features, everyday use features for data stage developers as well. For example, it's a web based interface, automatic metadata propagation and all the compilation errors coming in one window. So these are pretty useful features for our day-to-day -day use. Otherwise, most of them relate to big data as well. So these are some of the differences you can tell if somebody asked this question in an interview or if you were just curious about this and these are the features. And they are, all the links are provided here. I'll also put them in the description box. So if you want to know more in detail about these differences, then you can go to those links and you'll find a lot of information on those as well. So for now, that was it, and thanks a lot for watching this session. And please, please, please do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because there will be many more videos coming out. Thank you, and have a good day. Bye-bye.